Welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you never miss one of my videos. My name is Angela. I'm an artist and illustrator. I hope that you enjoy the free content on my channel and please leave comments below so that I can answer any of your art questions. I am also a children's book illustrator and character designer and I'm going to in today's video show you how to create a flower on my patreon account so click the link below become one of my patrons and then you can actually have a look at other videos and demos that i'm going to be uploading to my new patreon account so what i'm doing here is i'm doing an outline in a 2b pencil and i'm just making sure i know the structure i get the structure of that flower down and it's important before i actually start painting to do that then I take a putty rubber and I take out most of the pencil marks. So just try and leave a light outline. You can use a 2H pencil um, so that you just have a very light outline because you can't rub out pencil once you've painted watercolor over it. So I'm going to start with a wetting wet technique where I wet the paper first and then I add pigment in or paint. I'm using permanent rose, Winsor Newton artist color. The artist range is better because the paints will be color fast and they will last longer. I'm adding in more paint at the top there but it can be a little bit too strong so I can take water and add that in on the paper and pull that, that pigment down. Now that the paper is dry I wanted to show you what it looks like. I'm now going to start painting this area. So now what I'm going to do is start painting over the dry area. I'm going to put in a lemon yellow color there because that's the color that I see um, is part of the flower. And I'm just going in lightly with a naught or naught, triple naught brush so that it's a very fine brush. I use Pro Art brushes and they give me really fine detail. And I find that it's easier to use the smaller brushes, especially if I want to get really crisp edges like the one like I'm doing now at the top there. So I'm just being very careful to have a look at the little fine details that are on this flower that I'm busy painting. And I'm just making sure that I put the lines in. This particular flower had quite a few lines in it. So I used the wet and wet method and now I'm using a dry a dry method so it's on dry paper with wet paint so I use a variety of techniques when I'm actually doing the or painting the flowers so I just I'm using a lizarin crimson here so I'm going to make it a little bit more darker and put in some of the details as you can see and it takes a bit of time to do but it's worth just spending some time layering I like to layer my, my paintings, my watercolors, and make sure that the layer below this is dry. Because if it's not, then you're just going to carry on mixing paint around on your paper. So I'm just showing you there, I'm using alizarin crimson. And that is for the darker, darker bits that are on this actual flower. And it had a lot of these little lines. It was part of the design of this flower. So I very carefully take note of the colors that are on flowers and do a swatch before you start. So that means lay out your paints if you can before you actually start. And I'll, I'll add a swatch in so that you can see what I'm talking about. And I'm slowly working around in a semi-circle. I'm now using permanent rose and that's the Winsor Newton artist color. You can see it's, it's more of a pink color. That I'm busy using and sometimes I just use water I use a lot of water just to make a very thin um, tone or shade on, on an actual petal so now I'm just adding more pigment in and on like a wet on wet and there I'm just working on the top bit because it has dried a little bit and just adding more detail in there and as you can see I just work the painting. I give it time to dry and I go in and then I start working some details. Once I'm satisfied with the layers then I come back and work over the, the areas again. I'm using alizarin crimson again just adding in those details. I am 
adding in detail when it is still wet. I do that sometimes because it gives that kind of effect. Now I'm going to use some permanent rose again, just to add it to the petal there. You must remember also where there is light and shadow, you know, and, and where your light comes from. Because there are also shadows on an actual flower. So be aware of that, especially on the petals. You know, because it gives a flower dimension. You don't want it to look flat. So, you know, it's on a 2D surface, but you really, really don't want it to look flat. You want the painting to still, you know, come out. Sorry about the lighting. We had a power outage. You know, here in South Africa, we have a few of them. So the lights went out whilst I was busy filming this. So my apologies. But um, I continue to, to paint because I wanted to show you how to do this. So I'm just using permanent rose there. And I'm just using the wet and wet method. And slowly smoothing in some of the color at the top there. So now that it's all dry, you can see that there's a bit of a bleed there. But I'm going to go back and use a alizarin crimson, sorry, alizarin crimson. And now that it's dry, I want to add details in. It's very important to add the details in only once it's dry. Because I'll, like I said before, it's going to just mix in together. So I'm slowly working on this pattern that this flower has. It's a very unusual flower. And this is the flower that's found in the Cape area. It's very small little bushes. They're not really big bushes. Um, Fainbos is, is like a little, it's like the heather that you get in, in England. There's the downs, you know, the, when you go down and have a look at those areas. So I'm now going to use yellow ochre. I'm going to add this in near the end because I see a little bit of yellow ochre over there in just above the yellow bits so I want to just add that in and it just gives another dimension to this flower as you can see I'm just adding it in at the base of the flower and this will help with a 3d effect you can see that it's making the flower look different and that's what I like to do is I like to add in a variety of different colors. I'm slowly, slowly building up this color. It is on dry paper. As you can see, I'm working around in a semicircle. And I work all over the place on a painting because I make sure that the areas have enough time to dry. Now I'm going to go back with the alizarin crimson and now I'm going to try and darken some of the areas and put some of the shadow in because the shadows now are basically put near the end of uh, the painting. So you can see there's a top petal there that I'm just busy adding some details in over there. And I'm lightly, lightly working it back in to the other petal at the back there because sometimes you want hard edges and you want it to stand out, but you don't want to look like you're outlining everything, especially watercolor. Watercolor, um, sometimes I outline it, sometimes I just leave those soft, subtle edges so that people can see it's watercolor paint. Now, I'm not painting photorealistically, I'm painting a painting. So it still looks like a painting. As you can see, I keep adding in alizarin crimson and then pulling the paint across the petal. So I work with paint that's already on the paper. I don't necessarily always just add some of the paint in. As you can see, because I'm darkening the area, those front petals are starting to stand out. And this is what creates that three-dimensional look on a flower. And I'm just going in, working some of it, and that's it. Thank you for watching this tutorial.